Hi guys, welcome back. A lot of you asked me how I was able to afford so many designer bags. I think it would be really fun to do a video like this to share with you some of the tips that helped me to get my designer bags and also some of the mistakes that I have made in the past so that you can avoid making the same mistakes and it will help you to get your dream bag faster. After you watch the video, leave a comment down below let me know which tip is most useful for you. Besides telling you that you're gonna have to envision yourself with your dream bags every day. I'm gonna tell you some really practical and super useful tips that, that you can start applying right after you watch this video. I'm gonna divide this video into two main parts. The first part I'm gonna talk about how you can make more money. The second part I'm gonna talk about how to save money. Without any further ado, let's just get started. This one is super easy money. You know, there are so many credit cards out there and when you open a new credit card, they always give you those referral bonuses and this is something that you can totally do today. And I'm not asking you to open credit cards every day. I think one to two credit cards each year is very reasonable. Every time when you open your credit card, they give you a few hundred dollars opening bonuses and including the checking and savings account. This year, I opened a checking with a Bank of West and HSBC. Each one had 500 uh, opening bonuses. The most crazy opening bonuses I got this year so far is the rebate checking account with the First Republic Bank and what they offered me is $2,020 basically 2020 bonus opening account. I don't know if they still have this promotion at this moment. What you can do is Google it and you can just Google credit card opening bonus December 2020 stuff like that and you will be able to find some deals and you can get these money and this is totally no-brainer easy money everybody has some stuff at home that they don't use right for example like your old clothes they might still be in a wearable condition they might just be a little bit out of style or, or like anything that you no longer use and you might just list them online and sell them turn the trash into some cash, put them toward your backbone. And all you need to do is just take some pictures and upload them and sell them on apps like Poshmark, Macari, or eBay, wherever you think is the best. It is a little bit time consuming, but if you're not doing any side hustle or anything, this is at least something that you can do with your time and use your time to exchange some value for you. This one, you have to decide what works best for you because we all have limited time and energy throughout the day. There's only so much you can do. So you want to spend your time on the most valuable things, the where it can get you the most money. Whether it's getting an internal promotion or get a raise by changing a job or you start side hustle, whichever works for you. For me, I'm already at the principal engineer level, so I won't be able to get much raise even I work my ass off. So I want to start a side hustle. I love doing videos for you guys because I can share all the information and everything that I know with you guys. If you guys could like my video and subscribe to my channel, this will help me tremendously. If doing a YouTube channel or a blog is something that you're interested in, maybe you can give it a try as well. Spend your time and energy in something that you're passionate about that can help you to make some extra money. I know this one is a little bit cliche, but I think it's always so true because no matter what happens and people can take away anything, but they can't take the ability that you have. That's why you gotta have to invest yourself. Whether it's register something online to learn some new skills or, you know, invest a new debt, new computer to make you work more efficiently. You gotta have to invest yourself because that will allow you to make more money. You're going to have to spend some time to learn how to invest your money, make your money work for you. I don't know how to invest and I'm actually not that interested to look into this. So what I have been doing is I let my husband manage my 401k account, brokerage account. Basically, I give him all the password and he will manage all the money for me. And once in a while, he will tell me, oh, it's up to blah, blah, blah. If you don't know how to invest yourself, you can find somebody to invest for you, somebody you can trust. If you can't find somebody you trust and you also don't want to invest yourself you can 
put your money in some high yield savings account or CD. At least that's a safe investment. Those rates are not high, but still better than nothing. So before all these craziness happen, you all usually get CD rate of two point something percent. But after all these happen right now, most of CDs has dropped to like 0.6%, even lower. So what I have discovered is that this T-Mobile money bank, apparently they're FDIC. So what they do is if you are a T-Mobile customer, you register online with them, they give you 4% annual APY on the first 3000 and the rest of money they give you 1%, which is really, really high compared to CD. And it's not bad at all. If you don't know how to invest, and you should be able to put your money there. Even if you're not using T-Mobile, you still get 1%. This is not sponsored at all. And I'm just trying to share all the information that I have with you guys. If I'm aiming for a Chanel Classic flap, or Hermes Birkin or Kelly, I'm not gonna get distracted saying that there's a Saint Laurent bag on sale right now. I'm just gonna get that because it's much more cheap or I'm gonna get a cheaper seasonal Chanel bag. Please don't do that because I learned my mistakes. Before I got my Chanel Classic flap and I took a trip with friends to Vegas, I just lost my mind when I was in Vegas and I bought a Louis Vuitton bag and I end up selling it for way less price than what I have bought it for. I regret it so much. Because of that Louis Vuitton bag, it also took longer to get my Chanel Classic flap. If you guys are interested, you can check out my other video to talk about designer bags that I sold and why. I regret so much about it, so please don't make the same mistake. If you aim for that bag, just go for it and definitely don't get distracted by any other bags that are on sale or any other reason. Stop buying small, unnoticeable designer things like SLGs. I personally only have like maybe like three SLGs because in the back of my mind, I always know that if each SLG is $500, 10 SLGs, you can get another nice bag. Even you have 10 SLGs, you're not gonna be able to use all of them at the same time. You just simply wasted all your money in small, unnoticeable things instead of getting your dream bag. The rule is you don't want to go for those small unnoticeable things. You want to go for the big. Really once in a lifetime, I will go out to buy a coffee. I used to make coffee every single day in my office. Now I make coffee at home. I miss the espresso machine in my office. It does taste really good, but do I want to pay for $5 a cup of coffee? Probably not because it might just be $5, but it really accumulates, totally not worth it. I suggest you not buying coffee or avocado toast is because it's such high margin and a markup item that it's totally not worth it. If you want avocado toast, just make it yourself at home. They're super easy to make. It doesn't cost that much. And if you save you so much money and you spend all your money on these continuous spending, you may not realize that how much money you could have saved for your dream bag. It's the same thing uh, when it comes to nails and uh, blow up. I know it's really nice to get your nails done and you look pretty with your nails, but as I age, I just realized that actually I like to keep my nails chemical free. Or you say that they use non-toxic material and I just like to keep it clean. The thing with nails and uh, blow dry your hair is that those kind of spending small amount, but then it accumulates over time and you don't see it throughout the whole year, how much you will save without having getting your nails done or blow out your hair or stuff like that. And if you want to flat iron your hair or curl your hair, you can totally just do it yourself. Get a good curling iron and do it yourself at home. That will save you so much money. If you're renting a place, can you rent with a roommate or can you rent somewhere cheaper? If you have a mortgage, can you rent a room to other people or can you do a refinance? Can you cook at home? Can you do less Michelin star takeout? Do you need to buy designer clothes? When it comes to designer clothes, I think it's good to have some pieces super classic that you will be able to wear for a very long time. 
if it's those trendy pieces, then forget about it because you're only gonna be able to wear a few seasons and then they look so outdated and the other people look at you you're just like, oh my god, I don't wanna wear this because this is from like so many seasons ago. One more important thing is that when you get your Chanel Classic flap or your Birkin or Cali, you look good with anything you wear. If you take Uber, can you take Uber Pool? And can you walk? For those of you who have really fancy cars, please don't hate me. I'm I'm just not a person that are willing to spend a lot on the cars because the moment that you pick up your car from the dealership, the price is already depreciated so much. Can you try to find street parking instead of you have to pay for the parking? All the craziness going on and I think that a lot of company allow workers to work remotely at this moment. If you can work remotely, you can totally move to some other cities that's also upcoming really nice but have less living expenses than your current city like i'm in san francisco san francisco is super expensive i've been to other city like denver dallas austin i really like those cities and i think they're great if it's not all the families are here i would totally consider moving to other city to cut the living costs so if this is something for you you can definitely cut it's super important that you budget your income and you set a limit for yourself and a plan it ahead and you say uh, I'm gonna put this into spending and this amount I'm gonna save it for my bank fund and how much I'm allowed to spend and I will never go over this limit set a limit for yourself like all these things that I have mentioned like the small spendings, you just don't realize it. And once you start tracking it, you will realize that how much money you wasted on unnecessary things. You can use something like mint.com or some of the credit cards come with the report, spending report, where you can check where you spend your money. And then you look at it, you realize, oh, wow, this I shouldn't be spending. That I shouldn't be spending. And then next time you will get better. That's it for today. And I hope this is helpful. Please like my video and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you